What is up guys, it's Boy Gonzo and welcome back to a new video. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to make funk the right way, right way, and not just using some jazz samples and, you know, some Memphis vocals, but actually making it sound genuine and true to what it's trying to portray, as in Memphis rap, basically. But before we jump into the video, just in case you didn't know already, I am doing custom producer tags for only five bucks. So if you want a producer tag from me, you can click the link in the description. It's basically just a Fiverr page and you can order it and I'll deliver it to you most likely less than an hour. So if you want the producer tag for only five bucks, you can get it now. Anyways, let's jump into the video. So the prerequisites, I guess, for this video, I will be using my funk kit and I'm going to be using some VSTs. I'm pretty sure there are alternative for those VSTs when it comes to stock plugins but if there's gonna be a, a plugin that doesn't necessarily have an alternative or I didn't show it to you then it means that I couldn't really get it to work okay so first things first before actually making the funk track what I personally do is load up my master preset when it comes to making funk beats which usually either has a super VHS on it from baby audio or a degrader on it and the reason why I do this is because I try my best to kind of fake the uh, the vintage sound while still keeping it hard because after years of producing funk the only problem that i had was the song was too crisp too high quality for funk you know so adding a degrader or a super vhs or any slight bit crushing but not necessarily 8-bit sound bit crushing really makes a difference because it really gets rid of some of those really high frequencies and, and those crisp frequencies and it really adds to the whole track. So as I said, besides the soft clipper and whatnot, you can add a degrader and play with the settings. Granted, you just have no idea how it's going to sound like. The reason why I, I usually add these first is because when I start to make the track, I mix it as I go. So if I mix it for a high quality sound and then I add the degrader, it's probably not gonna sound as good as mixing it with these already loaded. So I'm just gonna use my uh, master preset, which is in the phone kit. I'm gonna put it on a random track and I'm just gonna show the settings. And it's basically a simple degrader with the sample rate slightly down, the bit depth all the way up and with a slight saturation because I wanna get it to hit harder, you know? And that's about it. So I can just get this and put it over the, uh, the master track. And now if I play this kick, you know, it sounds a bit fucky, although I am going to increase the sample rate a bit. Something like this, so it's not as in your face that it's, you know, bit crushed. This should do more than enough. So for the actual funk track, yes, you can use a jazzy melody. You can use a dark melody. You can use a cowbell melody. Uh, it's really not hard. I just picked a random sample from the drum kit. And uh, I mean, granted, I used this before, but it's easier for me to actually show you when uh, I know how the sample sounds like. So we already have a melody. You can just link it to the master track, to the mixer track, whatever, and just do a simple EQ. You don't really have to go super in-depth unless the sample actually requires you to do a lot of shit with it but in this case just a simple you know low cut and uh, some slight changes whatever it's gonna sound great i didn't really need to do much and it sounds perfect the way it is now for the vocals uh this one you can use vocals from memphis tracks you know like 90s memphis or you could just get a random acapella from a song released two days ago no one is really gonna complain it really depends do you want to go for something more newish or do you want to keep it reminiscent of old hip-hop i personally like to use mostly memphis vocals but then you get to a point where you've pretty much used all of them at some point and you know where can you go from there but once again for this video for the example i'm gonna be choosing a random memphis vocal okay so i'm gonna be using one of the most used ones probably because uh, it's easier to manipulate and as i said it makes it easier for me to show you how to do this stuff uh, i'm gonna be using this one Same thing, you're gonna be linking it to a different master track, mixer track, whatever, so you can actually EQ it and get rid of some of those frequencies. Same here, we're gonna do a low cut and we're gonna be adjusting some of these frequencies to make sure that it sounds good. Also, we're actually gonna be stretching it first, uh, depending how long you need it to be, four bars, uh, eight bars, two bars, uh, and just reset the pitch just so it sounds how it should sound like. And then we're, we're gonna adjust the pitch if needed. Point. Easy go, easy go, easy go. 
So if you notice, there's a discrepancy between the vocals and the sample. There's a slight melody in the vocals and uh, it's not really working well with the sample. Now, we could run both of these through a key finder or Antares' uh, auto key, but we might as well just pitch it one semitone down, then two semitones, three semitones. If it's too low, then we're gonna be pitching it up and see what fits best, basically. <laughs> Okay, so I like it how it's uh, how it sounds like pitch down three semitones. So I'm gonna keep it this way. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just do some slight chops, just to kind of get it, you know, give it a rhythm. I'm basically gonna splice it in half and then keep this at the very end. And I'm gonna do some slight chops again, just to kind of spice it up a bit, make it a bit more unique. <laughs> And that's it. This should do just fine for now at least. Maybe we'll do some changes later. We'll see how everything goes with the drums as well. And talking about the drums, let's make some drums. So you could use modern sounding snares, kicks, 808s, uh, hi-hats, whatever. But I personally like to use some more hard-hitting but kind of vintage-ish sounding. Uh, once again, I'm going to be using this drum kit. So I don't know. I'm thinking like... You know what I mean? Like this kind of snare. So yeah, I'm just going to pick this snare and uh, I'm going to make a super basic, typical, you know, snare pattern. And I'm going to put it down so we can hear it as well. And I'm also going to be using this snare as a filler snare. So I can just, you know, do the... Also make sure to disable the loop points. We're done with the snares for now. Uh, I don't think I'm going to change them, but whatever. Let's add some hi-hats as well. Same thing goes here, you can use some more crisp hi-hats or you can use some more old sounding hi-hats. And you can even pitch them down a bit. In this case, I'm actually not even gonna bother with rolls, I'm just gonna keep it on two steps. But of course you can, you can add extra hi-hats and do some, some stereo rolls and do some other crazy stuff with them. I'm just gonna keep it simple because I actually like how it sounds like on two-step and I also hate doing hi-hats. Anyways, of course, this specific symbol, which I usually do something like this with it. I enable the, uh, the, the envelope, I disable the loop points, of course, and then I do something exactly like this, basically. And in between, I'm gonna add an, an actual open hat, like this one. That's it. And we're good. Now let's add some kicks, and we're gonna leave the 808s last because those are fun. And we'll also actually need to use Key Finder on the melody so we can actually tune the 808s because it matters. For the kicks, once again, you can pick a standard, you know, just like a hard hitting kick or you can use something that also has some frequencies some extra frequencies like uh, this one or this one and that's it for the kick pattern uh now when you're making kicks uh in, in funk you can either go super active like maybe like 50 kicks in per second or you can go super spaced out i usually try to go in between i don't really like when there's no kicks at all or when there's basically just so keeping them somewhat balanced is a really important thing for me so that's what i do uh, but that's it mix wise you could just either go into the range tab and uh, increase the volume but i feel like this kick is strong enough i don't think it needs anything done so i'm just gonna keep it the way it is as per the 808 here comes the fun part you can get something super in your face super distorted or you can get something that's super subby but super hard hitting i usually try to make the best of both worlds by having a super hard 808 subby 808 but also it has some higher frequencies because it might sound good in my headphones but if i'm playing it you know on my phone what am i gonna do so i want to both hear it and feel it so i'm just gonna be playing this and uh, playing some 808s and see which one fits best so i'm gonna go for this one because it has bass and it also has higher frequencies and i'm also gonna distort it myself again because that's what i do so i'm just gonna put it here but first let's actually run an auto key 
through the melody so we can actually find out what key is in. So we're gonna go in the piano roll for the 808. We're gonna go to this drop down menu, helpers, scale highlighting, and then G sharp. And then once again, we're gonna select a minor natural Aeolian because that's the one we need. We're also gonna make sure that this is in C. So we're gonna open Edison and then use this tab and detect pitch regions and it is on C which is okay you could go the extra mile and use G tune or any tuning software or VST and then just look in to see if it's exactly on C and this one is on C but now we're gonna basically copy the kicks in this case because phone kind of goes like that stacking the kicks with the 808s so it's a good starting point and then we're just gonna paste them here legato them by using control L and now we can just make the pattern uh, you can just solo the 808 and the melody and the vocals, of course, and play them together. But also make sure to enable the envelope, first of all, because I forgot to do that. And now actually play them. You know, and just start making uh, the pattern. Uh, once again, here you can do it in two ways. You can either make it super melodic, not super melodic, but like somewhat melodic, or you can just keep it, you know, on, on like a solid C sharp, because in this case we don't have a C. It's really up to you. I like to do mine melodic just a little bit, at least, because it really adds a lot to the beat if, if the bass is also in tune with the melody. So that's what I usually do. <laughs> Okay, so something like this. Maybe the 808 is a bit pitchy in some points, uh, but that's because of the melody, since the 808 is on like a perfect C. So in this case, we're basically gonna be dis destroying the 808. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna be distorting it. So I'm just gonna use my go-to distortion plugin. You guessed it. How unexpected. Okay, this sounds good, but now, uh, after listening to everything together, uh, I kind of take back what I said about the kick. What I'm going to do besides actually EQing the 808, I'm also going to be EQing the kick, and I'm going to make it a bit more punchy and more subby in a way. Uh, so, first of all, the 808, what I'm going to do is slightly get rid of some of those super deep bass frequencies, and I'm also going to turn down those mid frequencies. Okay, so now not only that the 808 has low frequencies, it also has some actual mid, high mids to treble frequencies, which we can actually hear as well throughout the whole mix, meaning we can still get a taste for the 808, not just feel it. Now, going to the kick, all I'm gonna do is just add an EQ and basically do a super, super high cut like this, and then boost some of those bass frequencies like this, kind of make a sideways horizontal nipple. I don't know. <laughs> And I'm also actually gonna pitch it down by a few semitones. Okay, this sounds good. Uh, I actually like it. Uh, I, I'm probably gonna hate it, but I actually like it. So what I'm gonna do now is just split all of these by channel so we can have full control over all of these uh, separately. And we're basically just gonna structure it out for a bit so, so we can actually make it up into a beat and not just a loop. Yeah, this is basically the gist of it, like an actual more, I guess, in-depth tutorial of Fong. Granted, you can still add cowbells, you can still add a fuck ton of other vocals, you can uh, change the melody, you can use more melodies to make a bigger melody. The drums can still be different and still be Fong. So it's really not hard to produce what I'm saying is. Although mastering it, I guess, you know, like anything else, it takes time and practice. I produce Fong for mm, four years now. I still can't call myself a master of Fong. But yeah. Anyways, <laughs> that's uh, that's it with this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys learned something from it. And once again, if you guys want a producer tag from yours truly, you can click the link in the description. It's going to take you to my Fiverr page and I'll deliver it as soon as I can. Anyways, it was a big so I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.